Okay, it's five o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first up is roll call. All the person Perella, Ackley, LB, Lucky Paneski. Here. All right, we're all present. Can we all please join me in standing and reciting the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and uh, barring any objections, I think we can skip through the introductions this time around. Uh, so we are on to 2.1, approval of the minutes. We have any motion or discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. On to item 3.1, which is resolution 23-21-22. Uh, a resolution updating the policy for applying the undesignated fund balance for the general funds ensuing budget budget year. Scott. Thank you, Chair. Um, basically, if you look at the IFC, you'll notice that part of part of our strategic plan and our stairs core values is basically moving forward and having better stewardship when it comes to our our borrowing. Um, if you remember back when we gave the state of the city and later in a financial review, we basically looked at our borrowing and where should we be with our fund, with our, with our finances the way they are today. And I presented that we really wanted to stick around the $2 million borrowing and that our undesignated fund balance has significantly grown over the years. As an example, when the city borrowed $5 million from the undesignated fund balance for the city hall remodel, and that was just $5 million of, of fund balance and uh, six and a half, uh, five and a half million of uh, borrowing, we paid that back in less than two years. Now, again, what, what goes into the general fund is pretty much the overflow from, from budget year to budget year. And as we tighten things up, and with revenues reducing and costs continuing to go up, the, the overflow of fund going into fund balance um, fluctuates from time to time. What we are asking the council and the committee to approve is through this proposal is that we would actually be able to use um, the, the basically uh, the amount that's overflowing from year to year from, uh, so like, in 2020, we had a million two of um, non-designated money from the prior budget overflow into the um, general fund. So we would like to actually be able to use that versus using versus it going into the general fund. We would actually be able to use that to reduce the amount of debt that we would actually be borrowing the year after. Um, so I guess if there's any questions, I can explain it a little bit better. But we do have 53%. According to our GASB 54, we, we were trying to figure out where we came up with the 25%. We're at 52%, I believe. And our policy says that we only need to have 25%. In talking with Ehlers, we found out that it, we, we, the city, went from 18% to 25%, which is still very generous in the municipal world. We want to keep it at the 25%, but any allotted amount above the 25%, we would like to be able to, with council approval and project approval, we would like to be able to use that for projects. And that's really what that money is for, is we call it rainy day, but it really, um, at, at the level that we're at, we, we're in a desert because we've never used the money other than for City Hall. So right now with economics the way they are, we need to be looking at our, um, our general, general, uh, um, the money in our general fund also for either debt reduction or for capital improvements projects. But again, we don't want to go below 25% and, 
Ehlers told me that basically uh, municipalities look at the general fund as a rainy day and we should have a, several months worth of operating costs. We have years worth of operating cost from that perspective. So I'm asking the council to approve resolution 3.1 um, any money that is actually used for projects would have to come forward. Any borrowing would have to come forward to the council and to finance and personnel committee. So either way, this policy allows us to use it, uh, assuming that the finance and personnel committee and the council approve that spend. Any questions? I've got some questions. Go ahead. Um, how much money is in the, the fund currently, the general fund? I would have to look. I don't have that in front of me. I, it's, in our, it's in our budget in brief. And then if you wanted to add 1.2 million to that, and I apologize I didn't bring it. Caitlin, can you look that up? Yeah. Are, you, are we on. talking? Okay. If you hold on just a second, we'll have that number for you. That'd be good. While, while she's looking for it, um, what's the rule of thumb with other municipalities that for percentage of fund balance? Ehlers said 25%. Is that, is that typical for larger municipalities? Is that, is that the base that the state tells us we have to have? No, there was a confusion with GASB 54. We thought that GASB 54 originally was the identifier on what the percentage is. In talking with Ehlers, there isn't an actual percentage. As I had said, um, they basically recommend that you have several months of, of operating cost as a buffer. As an example, where, where Caitlin came from, anything over 10% they would spend and we are presently at right here the 30 35 oh. fund balance yeah the fund balance right now is 18 over 18 million and that's for general fund and again we only need to have 9 million and some change in there so we're over over double if that answers your question. Over, um, it does. And, then, and typically our budgets range $4 million a year. Our, our capital improvements budget uh, for, for many, many, many years, over a decade, we're, at, we're capped at $3 million. And I believe it was three or four years ago, we, in capital improvements, we had questioned that amount. And in calculations for for construction cost and cost of living and things like that, it was it was um, it was increased. I believe that we could go up to about 4.7 million. The question that I had is, we can we can always increase it, but we have to be able to afford the spend, the payments, and the city has spent a lot of money in the last four to five years. So our our debt payment is around 4.7 a year just in debt. And that's, and that's principal and interest, of course. So the, the concept that I'm bringing to the table is that we need to reduce our, our continued borrowing and use some of the money is what I call in the, in the mattress because of the fact that we shouldn't be, in my opinion, we shouldn't be borrowing money when we have money in the mattress, as I call it, um, because it's, it's, to me it's bad stewardship. We wanna have money for a rainy day, but. 52% or 53% versus the, the needed 25% per our ordinance is still, to me, uh, not a very good, a good place to be. We have um, capital improvements projects that we all know as alders that have been kicked down the road for many years. And every time we kick these projects down the road, it costs us more later when we have to go and review them and fix them. I'm not asking to spend all of the money. I'm just asking that we have a policy so that when I talk with Moody's, I can reference the policy and that this is our, our practice. If, if, it's, 
if there's money in there above the 25% that the council has the ability in our policy to basically allow it to go towards capital improvement projects. That's what, what I'm asking for. I have some more questions if anybody else doesn't. Sure, shoot. Go ahead. Um, this general fund historically has only been used for capital improvements. Is that accurate? General fund can only be used for capital improvements and um, it's basically our, our rainy day money. It cannot be used for operations unless something went south, if you know what I mean. Yeah, okay, Pay, I, can't, I can't both get me on my computer and the document, but it was page two of the document that outlined the um, different sections, it was a, in a little table, the different sections of encumbered, None. unencumbered, designated, yep. undesignated, yep. can, can you in a thumbnail go through that and perhaps give an example of if we have currently an undesignated or a designated dollar amount in that general fund? I'm, tr I'm trying to get my hands around the size of the fund, what's been encumbered or promised, what's left over, and good stewardship. <laughs> so I believe on page two of that document that it, it does explain, okay. So for uncommitted where we are around right. for 2021, we're at 15, uh, 735. For committed, we have 2.4 million. So it equals the actual 18 plus million for 2021, what, which is what was adopted. If we look at the 2020 estimated for uncommitted, we were at 17.7 .7 and some change and committed we were at 2.4 for a total of 20 million, um, 175,000 and some change. And again, please remember that we only need 9 million and some change. So just round it off to 10. Um, so then if we look at on page two, it does talk about restricted fund balance, spendable fund balance overview. We have what the fund balance is and the difference between the assets and liabilities. Some of the monies obviously can't, if they're committed, those are funds that we have to carry because it's liability that is, um, that could come due to the city yeah. as an example. Yeah. The uncommitted and I was go ahead. I was I was understanding that a great percentage of this general fund goes to pay the debt. Is that accurate? To pay the debt. What please please the, explain. The, the there was there was a four point something million again. I don't have the document in front of me. I I apologize. Can you tell me the document that you're referencing? It's the, it's the one that we got attached. And I, I can ask a question later when I can get the document printed. Carrie, what document are they talking about? The one attached to the minutes, uh, the one attached to the agenda. Are you talking the IFC, Roberta? Yes. Okay, I have I have the IFC in front of me, and I'm I apologize. I I don't see the numbers that you're you're referencing. It's I should who should apologize because I don't have it in front of me. No, no, but I'm I am trying to follow along. So, um. We try to give as much information as possible. The, the spirit of the of the policy that we are asking for is to is to allow the, the council has the ability to use the general fund for capital improvement projects, but we don't have any reference to that 
in in our um, in our ordinance in our um, in our document. So when we when we talked about the fact that uh, the GASB 54 in our ordinance it references GASB 54 when we went from 18 percent to 25 percent, and we thought well originally we thought well let's just follow the GASB 54. Well that. GASB 54 just talks about the limits and what's recommended and things like that. In talking with Ehlers, um, Dawn Gunderson, basically her and I in conversation, she basically said that Moody's looks at 30% or better as favorable for a municipality. So my, my thought was that's one reason why we get favorable um, AA2 recommendations because we are significantly above the 30%. The issue is that we've increased our debt also over the years. So one of the things that um, Dawn Gunderson and I talked about is getting it into our policy so that we can actually document and I can reference the actual um, policy to Moody's because otherwise it's, it, it doesn't seem like we are following any, any practice or process. So what we're asking here is that the committee and the council approve this. Any, any budgeting, any funding, any spending ha still has to go through finance and personnel and the council. We're just basically saying this is our process. Any unrestricted funds can be used for projects above the 25%. I have a question. If Moody's, if Moody's looks favorably upon 30%, would it be wise of us to be at 30%? No, I, I did ask the, the exact same questions, Roberta, and Dawn from Ehlers basically said, you don't want to do that because if the day ever came and we ended up going below the 25%, then Moody's could look at that as a negative versus a positive. I didn't understand that. If we have a if we have a baseline of thirty percent, if we if we have more than thirty percent, we're at fifty two percent. Correct. We're, we're basically saying in our ordinance we have it. It changed from eighteen percent to twenty five percent. If we move that twenty five to thirty. If we ever end up needing to go below 30, then Moody's will look at right. that as a negative. So I'm understanding that we have a policy written that says 25%. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Don't want to change that. I don't want to change that. Thank you. You're welcome. So. May what I'm understanding is, oh, okay. We can circle back, but go ahead, Alta Thank you. So the, the policy exists already, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Um, right here. Is that the policy you're referring to? Yeah. No. You, Carrie, did we put the, we attached the policy? Yeah, you, yeah. the committee should have had the, the resolution 2321-22. Yes, I, I got it. So the, the one that I, has all the definitions, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I understand the, the concept and I understanding, uh, I would just wanted to have a confirmation. One that, so you said, or better, it looks like that the um, the reserve would be used only for capital improvements, right? Council approved capital improvements, yes. All right. It cannot be used for operational. And could that be could that be used for uh, emergency situations, just mm -hmm. as it would be used if left? as a reserve of the GEO funds. Yes, if the city of Sheboygan were to have a catastrophic situation and monies were needed, we could use that. 
Perfect, thank you. And finally, I was a little confused about the definitions pre-GASP and post-GASP. So would the definitions also be changed? Is that also an ask today, that definitions are changed, adjusted, in addition to the content, the substance of what is asked? Do the definitions also change? No, the definitions do not change. So when, when in the policy it says that the statement substantially changes how fund balances are, are categorized, what does that mean? Which, which paragraph? The first paragraph under background. Oh, the GAS. So the statement is, statement substantially changes how fund balances are categorized and clarifies, modifies how some of the governmental funds are presented and classified. Does that mean that these descriptions are going to be changed because then I was a little confused about what is the current definition and what the definition is going to be. And it's not just a matter of semantic. I was actually wondering if then uh, what was what and if the part that we are going to in fact free in quotes from the reserve is only the assigned and undesignated funds and which one that is in this table is what I'm asking. I guess um, my understanding is with the background of it is the fact that our original policy referenced, and it's not really a policy as Chuck would correct me on, it's our resolution references the GASB 54 because of how GASB 54 has, is written, because it's a government fund and government fund type definitions. We do go according to the fund type definitions by GASB 54. The way it was written, we, we assumed that GASB 54 actually called out the 25%, and in review by the attorney's office, my office, and, and others, that GASB 54 does not call out the actual 25%. We're still going to go by the definitions that GASB 54 calls out, but we are adding in the, the ability for the uh, city council to allow non-designated general fund dollars to be used for, upon approval by the council, to be used for capital improvements to reduce the amount of borrowing that we that we have been doing. I apologize. I don't want to take um, too much space. So if someone else has a question, otherwise I have a follow-up question. Uh, I'll just interject with a really quick question. When it came to using fund balance for City Hall, was that what we did there, basically exactly what this policy just as a written version saying we can do in the future? That is correct. I guess that what I don't understand is if there is no amount set in the policy, why does the policy itself <clears throat> need to be changed? I mean, I understand the change of use of the geo funds, um, and I actually agree with that. I just don't understand what is that in the policy has to be changed if there are no numbers and percentages. We're not, we're not changing the numbers, Grazia. What we are looking to do is add the point that the city council can approve for capital improvements projects, the undesignated funds above the 25%. So the 25% is a number that the council defined years ago when we went from 18 to 25 to build a better cushion, but we've continued to add into our, our general fund year over year, and we're not using it. We can use it. We did use $5 million for the City Hall project, but when I go to the Moody's for our audit review and our, our geo borrowing review to keep our AA2, we don't have it in our, in our um, ordinance that the council has the, that it's part of our policy that anything above 25% can be used for capital, 
capital projects. So it, for them, we're not following a process if it's not in our, we can still do it, but it, if it's in our system, if it's in the ordinance, then it, they understand it's something that we can do and that we review. Perfect. Thank you very much for explaining it, for further explaining it. So basically, there's an addition specifying yes. it. Yes, it's, it's an addition. Perfect. And so no definition also will be changed, correct? Correct. Perfect. Thank it's you so much. Just an addition. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion from committee members? Roberta, I think we might have cut you off before. Are you good? I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. OK. In that case, we are looking for a motion to recommend approval. I make a motion to recommend approval. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All, aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Next up is item 3.2, which is direct referral resolution 26 21 22. A resolution authorizing the payment of UMR invoices for administrative fees, transplant, and stop loss coverage. Who would like that one? Go for it. Good afternoon. Um, we are uh, adopting new policies based on uh, past practices that weren't necessarily in alignment with what uh, we needed to do both in the Human Resources Department and in the Finance Department. So this is uh, our first uh, opportunity to actually implement a process that would, whenever there's an invoice that is over the threshold of what Administrator Wolf is authorized to, um, uh, to pay, that it would go through to finance and personnel. We are working on uh, an aspect of a policy so that we would be able to, uh, because these are typical monthly invoices based on our self-insurance program, that these would be something that you would be able to see and approve uh, the authorization for Administrator Wolf to go forward and, and authorize payments on a monthly basis. Uh, at this point, we are asking for the particular invoice that's attached to be paid. Um, based on the fact that this is something that has been a regular occurrence through through our operations and through our self-funded insurance plan. So this is the first time that you'll be seeing this. Um, this isn't an unusual invoice. It, it's just one that we're bringing forward to you because this is the, the initiation of a process that we want to be more in compliance uh, for you and for the council. Are there any questions? Otherwise, I'd like to add a few few words. I have I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so, monthly, we will be seeing these. the The goal is that you will be seeing uh, these on a monthly basis until the the new policy is adopted, so that you will have uh, uh, either a monthly financial report or a quarterly report or uh, the policy that will allow for the payment of this on that uh, on a month. We pay that on a monthly basis, but you will have that annual agreement uh, to be able to allow Administrator Wolf to actually process these. Actually, in your experience, in your experience, does the monthly dollar amount vary widely? It can, based on the claims that are that have uh, occurred, the timing of the payment of those claims. This this invoice is through UMR, which is our health benefit provider or vendor, and so the it it truly can vary anywhere. Well, I don't want to venture a guess right now, but they're generally over fifty thousand dollars up to uh, can be up as much as a hundred thousand dollars, depending on what has happened in the course of uh, the employee's claims. Right. I would like Thank I'd like to, I'd like to make a couple of comments. The the whole concept of this is that we were again for transparency. Uh, Vicky and I are bringing forward areas that we feel need to have approval processes, so that we're we've got our eye on the ball per se. We these these um, these have been approved month over month. Uh, for many, many years and have not been brought forward. I would recommend that we 
we would be bringing forward quarterly the review because of the fact that it does go, it does ebb and flow. And to look at it in a month snapshot really doesn't help everybody. We should be as a, as a committee looking at these, at these on a quarterly fashion so that quarter to quarter you understand how the actual um, health insurance is being utilized by our, by our team. Looking at it monthly to me is more busy work. Quarterly, again, we can't change it. The spend is the spend. If our employees go or have, a, uh, have situations happen um, or have emergencies happen, that spend is going to fluctuate. And please understand that the spend that we're actually approving has a time, a time lapse in it also. The other point to it is the fact that if we don't um, take our recommendation and the council wants to look at it monthly before it's approved, we will actually incur fines because you, we will be holding up the actual uh, payment process. Again, the concept of this is the, is the fact that I'm just approving the, the financial, the, the cost, the spend of the medical piece so that we don't incur fines and that somebody, the group, the team is actually looking at the numbers month over month and then quarterly we would bring those numbers to you to, to talk about what, what the activity has been. Any questions? No questions? Just one brief oh. question. <laughs> so in the, the policy will include that we will look at it on a quarterly basis then? Quarterly, quarterly, we would be reviewing it as a finance department, but please understand that the payment would already be approved by the city administrator. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, we're going to go with Elder Feldy first, but these are these are we're going to catch up, and these are the back payments we owe. This, the this is the July invoice. Not at all. This is the July invoice. Okay. Um, do we have a comparison to last year at all? And, you know, is there I a can... way when you bring these to us every month, is there a way to um, maybe compare them to? Yes, we, we can do a comparison for you. We can provide that information. Um, 2020 was an unusual year because of COVID pandemic. that we did not have as many claims as was typical. We did see a spike in the beginning of 2021 as people were going back to their physicians. Um, but we would have uh, opportunity to share information from 2019, 2020, and 2021, what our, what our trend has been. We can do that. Great. Thank you. All right. Elder Flicky Pineski. Uh, actually, that was part of my question, and Alder Feldy did it. Perfect. Great. Two great minds. Any other questions? Perfect. Seeing none, then I believe we are looking for a motion to recommend approval. I recommend approval. Second. All right. Um, seeing no further discussion, we have a motion and a second. So, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Our next meeting is July 12th and we are now at the end of our agenda and looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, we have a motion by Elder Perella. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please aye. indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes and we are adjourned. Thank you. Those were weak eyes. Doesn't nobody want to go home? <laughs>